<laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is India Webb. I am a senior psychology major, African American studies minor from Dallas, Texas. Hi, my name is Hattie Tamadu. I am a senior psychology major, human development minor from Pennsylvania. Hi, my name is Dallas Jeanette. I am a junior psychology major, music minor with a concentration in voice from Westchester County, New York. Hi, everyone. My name is Naomi Brown. I am a psychology major, bio minor from Hartford, Connecticut. Hi, guys. I'm Anna. I'm a senior psychology major, sociology minor, and I'm from PG County, Maryland. Okay, so the movie that we're going to be talking about is The Five Bloods. And so starting off, you see the five men come meet each other in Vietnam. And um, it's interesting because all of them were in a group together that was fighting in Vietnam before, but obviously it was in Vietnam where they were younger. And you see it's not five of them that are there. It's, well, it's five of them there, but only four of them fought, and one of them is their son. So they're in Vietnam meeting up because they're trying to find gold that the other um, veteran that was with them that they buried. And they were also trying to find his body, the remains of his body. So yeah. And as they go along, they just have to get through a lot of things. If anybody wants to talk about that really quick. Some of their um, obstacles. So some of those obstacles were both personal and um, just in terms of hurdles in the road. Um, so like one of those personal things was one of the soldiers, um, him and his son, um, his son actually surprised him on the trip. He wasn't supposed to come initially, but he came because he was worried about his father who was um, facing some mental challenges as a result of serving in the war. And so he decides to join, to join them on their journey for a share of the gold. Um, so their plan was to find the remains of one of the characters who died in the war, whose name was Norman, um, a character who's played by Chadwick Boseman. And um, the other plan was to find the gold that they had found during the war that they buried um, in hopes of coming to retrieve it later. Um, and to convert that into money um, and to divide that into equal shares between all the members. Yeah, so that's the quick uh, synopsis of the story. So does anybody want to talk about the characters? All right, my name is Hattie and I'm going to talk about the casting and the characters. Um, first, I'm just going to point out like the main characters. It was Chadwick Boseman, Jonathan Majors, Delroy Lindo, Clark Peters, Norm Lewis, um, Isaiah Whitlock Jr., Sandy Hong Fong, um, Jean Reno, and Lee E. Lun. So those are the main characters I'm going to talk about. And I'm just going to talk about how well they played their roles first. And I think personally, they all did a pretty good job. I will say that Delroy Lindo, who played Paul, was really into his character. He made you feel like um, you were or he was actually like in war and he was actually like he actually had PTSD. And that's not an easy mindset to get into. So the fact that he was able to portray that on camera is very, very good. And we also have Chadwick Boseman who played Storm and Norman. And although his character died in the movie, um, he was a very pivotal character in this movie because everything that they were doing led back to him. And even when he was acting like as they were in the past you could see how passionate that he was um in this role and how he was playing it really well because it's Chadwick Boseman I don't think he's ever played a bad role um and now I'll go to Clark Peters um Norm Lewis and Isaiah Whitlock which were Otis Eddie and Melvin respectively um I think they did a pretty good job as well because again, 
they were main actors, but they were also kind of like supporting actors as well because they would, they were, they were all friends. So I think they did pretty well. I was, I don't think they were as passionate and as um, into their roles as Delroy Lindo and Chadwick Boseman, but I also think that's because um, their parts weren't as significant. Like they didn't have that PTSD or they weren't the character who just died and then they're going to find their uh, pieces or remains in Vietnam. Um, next, I'm gonna talk about Sandy Hong Fong. Please excuse me if I say this wrong. Um, she was casted as Nishon, who was the daughter of Otis and um, Chan Lu. I, again, I'm really butchering the names. I think that was really good casting, not only because she um, obviously looked biracial, she looked black and she looked Vietnamese, but the actual um, actor, actress, um, Sandy, she is actually black and Vietnamese. Um, she was born in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, and her father was actually in the military while her mom was working. So I think that was really good casting because she could obviously relate to not the entire situation in the movie, but her role in that movie. Um, I will say something that was kind of off to me personally was when they had the younger versions of them, like when they had the flashbacks, you could obviously tell that Chadwick Boseman looked younger because he didn't have any hair on his face. And when you don't have hair on your face, you look more um, young and innocent. But all the other ones, Jonathan Majors, Delroy, Clark, um, Norm, and Isaiah, who was David, Paul, Otis, Eddie, and Melvin, it was just them. It like they they didn't like recast or try to like cut off their beards or because you could see the gray hair. So I think that was a fault in um, the casting because they don't look like it didn't look like a flashback. It wouldn't have looked like a flashback if Chadwick Boseman wasn't in there or Storm and Norman. It just looked like their regular selves because they looked aged. I mean, they are older, but they don't look any younger or as young as Chadwick. Um, I think, and the last thing I will talk about is Paul and David. Um, Paul, who's played by Delroy Lindo and David, who's played by Jonathan Majors, who was Paul's son. That was really good casting, in my opinion, too, because even when you look at pictures of them, they kind of have similar features. So and he's tall as well. So I think that was also good casting. That is all. And now we're going to move to music. So before I talk about music, I just want to point out that it was kind of really sad to um, see Chadwick Boseman in this film just because in the back of my mind, I was just remembering that this was one of the last roles he played before he died. And so seeing him just like in this film and knowing that and kind of just seeing that he looked kind of sick in this film was kind of sad to me. I'm sure you guys can relate as well, but I just wanted to point, it, point that out before I moved on to music. Can I say something too about that? Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was sad as well, but I also thought it was kind of like, like, I it's kind of eerie to like see him as a ghost and like now that he's passed now it was it was weird but it was interesting at the same time I feel that yeah and it was also kind of heroic like you know the fact that he persevered and was in a movie that was as you know just active as this film knowing that he was going through something and was nearing his death it's kind of heroic and it, it honestly makes me gain even more respect um, for him as a person. So yeah. Okay, so moving on to the music in the film. Um, honestly, there was a lot of Marvin Gaye. Uh, I wanna say the majority of the film featured Marvin Gaye's music, um, songs like What's Going On and What's Happening Brother. Um, as well as other songs that speak to war, civil rights, police brutality, and other social issues were featured in the film. Um, I just wanted to point out that what's going on, their 50th anniversary was celebrated this year. Um, and 
something that was pointed out as a part of the 50th anniversary celebration was that the same social issues going on in the 60s and 70s are still going on today. And I think that's similar to how war and the lack of unity was still going on in the movie um, years after the Bloods returned to Vietnam. So the same social issues, lack of unity, war issues that were going on when they were actively serving in the military were still going on um, as they returned to Vietnam to you know, make their, fulfill their mission. Um, and I thought that was pretty, um, pretty cool for that. Um, also, all the music played in the movie was psychological in terms of putting us in the mind of remembering all the unfortunate events that have happened and are still happening now, um, which kind of also relates to the fact that war issues, um, the lack of rights for Black Americans and um, lack of unity is still going on even to this day. So it's like a relation between the movie and real life um, today. And then also there was a comparison with Marvin Gaye's relationship with his father, which was extremely troubled from the time he was a child, um, which was similar to the characters David and Paul. Um, Marvin was actually murdered by his father, similar to how Paul abandoned his son when he was injured in the movie, he was actually shot in the leg. And one of the characters, I believe it was Otis pointed out that he thought that the gunshot wound was affected, infected, I'm sorry. And um, instead of staying with his son and making sure that he was okay, Paul decided to abandon his son and the rest of the group to try to fulfill the rest of the mission on his own. Um, and he basically expressed that his son was dead to him. Um, and so I thought that was a good comparison as well. And that's all. Now we're moving on to camera work and editing. Right. So hi, Anna. And um, a lot of the camera work and editing for this movie, I can say, was really touching to the entire story of it, like really invoked a lot of emotion and really made a lot of sense of where the storyline was. Um, pretty much like in the beginning of the movie with the black and white and the what was happening during the war in Vietnam and in the United States. But then as it slowly from the hotel that they all met up when it was black and white from during the time they were there for war until the present day when they got there, it kind of showed like how they really went back to kind of like the same thing, but also something entirely different, I felt like. Also, there were some points where uh, like when David gets there and he meets with his father and he's trying to like get the gold out of him, like I won't say anything if you just give me the money and they all see him, the angle of making like the camera higher than him really showed like the power advantage, I feel like. Like these are all your uncles, your dad, and you're kind of just like, you may be a grown adult man, but you're still a kid to them and you can't really get anything out of them. Which I felt like was a lot of the movie pretty much was trying to make him seem small until eventually to the point that the angles and frames were to where they were on the same level, which didn't really get to the end, I feel like. Um, a lot of it really showed the relationships, I feel like, and the color choices kind of showed when it went from the past to the present day, which like Hattie said about how they didn't choose characters for their younger selves. I feel like the only way you could have really tell that they were back there in that time was because the color went a more bluish or like a darker, say blue to say, and that Chadwick Boseman was there. Cause if not, I feel like it would have been very confusing since they were still their older selves. Um, but yeah, I really set up the storyline. I think a lot of the close-ups and the transitions and the color choices really made it pop to stand out for the story. Also, a lot of the frames of just like where they were, were like really beautiful to tell where they were, like when they were looking for the gold 
and the shots of Vietnam really like told everything. Also, the close up of when they were on the boat and Paul was getting into that argument with the Vietnamese man trying to sell him chickens and how it got really close to his face really showed how like flustered he was and how the PTSD was really affecting him during that time in the movie because it just seemed like the closer it got the more sweat you could see the more upset he was getting and he just really close to his face really gave all of the powerful emotion that was happening in there but yeah that's unless anybody wants to add anything that's all I have to say about that I um, agree um they on the close-ups when he was walking by himself and um, when he had his own like little monologue in the end, I thought that was really powerful because you could really feel like all the emotions that he was feeling and all the thoughts that he was having about his like past experiences as well. So I think they did a really good job with that. Yeah, the close-ups to me were my favorite. Like you just really saw all the emotion in there. And I, I appreciate that. Yeah, me too. I would like uh, to add myself, um, like when it went, from like present day to like a flashback the frame like went narrower like when it was a flashback the frame was narrow and then when it was present day it was like a wide frame so I just wanted to add that as well yeah I noticed that too it was kind of giving like if it were like an older movie type of thing because like old movies were always like in small frames that's how I saw it but um, conclusion of that, I guess we're moving on to setting and costumes. Hello. Um, so for setting and costume, I'm going to focus more on a costume first and get more into the setting. So I know, you know, the scene opens up. I mean, the movie opens up with, um, you know, with different um, political scenes about from civil rights, stuff like that. And you can really get a touch of like, you know, the 60s and 70s type of feel. And I really appreciated that because, you know, there are actual like um, scenes and videos from the 60s and stuff. And when we first see the um, the bloods, they're in um, a hotel that's really like lavish, you know, gold and marble. So I, I know when I first seen the movie, um, I was thinking like, oh, it's gonna be more so like, you know, um, old guys in my retirement or like old guys in retirement and like, you know, having a nice vacation because, you know, they're traveling to Vietnam, stuff like that. It seemed like a very um, happy, go lucky movie at first, just from the setting and just from the, from the vibes and their emotions of, of high, um, just happiness and not seeing each other for so long. And um, when they, um, and then the next thing after that was when they went to the club and it was very flashing lights and stuff like that. And I noticed that um, they were the only, well, I only noticed they were the only African-Americans in the club and they're also the oldest people in the club as well. So I kind of, that kind of like talked more so into like in their outfits, you know, very like dad, like, you know, I'm talking about like, you know, like the hats and the button down t-shirts with the little Hawaiian prints and the shorts and the little sandals, so, so cute at first. And um, going more, more so into the movie, the more of the, um, the bulk of the movie, they were of course in the jungle. So of course they were sweaty and dirty because they have access to like clean water and, and amenities. So they were, of course they were, you know, dirty and sweaty, stuff like that. Basically got the rest of the movie. Um, also as well, I did notice that Paul um, wore a make a make a great again cap, which was kind of um, um, you know not surprising due to his blunt um, personality, but just kind of surprising because like as a military person, I wouldn't think that he would want to support a um, a person like Trump, but that's his um, prerogative. And also um, his son David though was very passionate or very um, proud about wearing about going to Morehouse because he wore multiple Morehouse college um, um, paraphernalia at the um, movie he wore the t-shirt when they were traveling and he also wore a cap as well later on in the film and um, I also think that um, throughout the movie when they show different um, parts of Vietnam actually really beautiful even though the jungle was very 
dangerous due to like the minefields. I mean, stuff like that. It, it was still a beautiful thing just because like you could see the different ferries and the different water areas. It looked very natural, very beautiful. Um, also, like the, I, just, I also like the scene where they were in the, the um, river market because they're not very common to where we are in the States. So that was very cool to show more of Vietnamese culture and like how they operate things, how they maneuver throughout their, um, their life. And that's all I have for setting the costume. Okay. If you need to like, you know, agree or something like that. All right, sorry, I'll stop. My bad, my bad. Um, no, I agree. Um, going back to the Morehouse thing, you could tell that him and Paul were both very proud of that because Paul brought it up when they were in the minefield as well um, to try to keep him like proud or whatever. Um, so I'm gonna talk about the psychological impact real quick. I'm gonna focus on the question that was the theme for this movie, which was how can films make us understand more about war and its consequences? So for Paul, they focused a lot about the PTSD and a little bit of the guilt that he felt, PTSD coming just from the war in itself and then the guilt from being the person that actually killed Norman and not, not telling anybody about it. Um, and you could see how, based on everything that we talked about before with how they portrayed Paul and the close-ups on his face and everything, you could really feel what he was feeling um, and it was like trying to show the audience that people that were in w the war, like, yes, they're tough and strong, but they also like have a lot of emotional feelings that people don't get to see a lot of the times um, from those uh, situations. And then you could also see between the relationship with the five bloods that um, struggle can bring people together and like things that you have to do, like you become close to people when you have to fight for the same thing at the same time. And I feel like they showed that a lot throughout the film. And also going back to the PTSD thing, um, like with Paul, he was very untrusting of not only new people, but Vietnamese people as well. And I feel like they showed that very well in the film because, and I'm glad they showed it because my grandpa was in the Vietnam War and he says some questionable things sometimes. So it was like a very real thing about like black people not, black people that were in Vietnam, Vietnam or just Vietnam vets in general, not really wanting to um, or feeling trust trustworthy of Vietnamese people because of what happened during the war, even though the way that they see things may not be how things actually happened during the war. And they also showed that even if you are not fighting in it, it can still have an effect on the people that live there because um, the tour guide that they had was telling them how there were families that don't speak to each other anymore because of the war, because they were on two separate sides. And it was just showing how um, the war can pull families apart and it can mess up relationships and it can keep people from building new relationships with other people just because of biases that were formed because of something that really had nothing to do with either side because a lot of um like with the radio that they were playing that the radio show that they kept playing they kept saying emphasizing how black people are not a part of the war and that this war was not for them so yeah that's basically all I have to say if anybody else has anything to add I know we're kind of running out of time sorry I just wanted to add one thing um I also thought um it was pretty interesting how they talked about Otis and um, his love interest. Um, her name was Mi Chong. I'm sorry if I butchered her name. Um, but how they couldn't really be together back in the time when they met the first time because due to like, you know, lots of different like racial things, stuff, stuff in that nature. And now even like she had to hide who her father, who, the, who was the father of her child from not just her, not just from, not just from the daughter, but from everyone else around her just so she wouldn't be killed. Like it was just a very like, psychological thing as well so yeah that that was important too yeah I agree that was also a very important part to add something that's a little bit less um I, guess, I don't want to say relevant but it's less focused on the actual film itself or the film that the um the question that the film was trying to answer was just the fact that um like viewers like myself and some some of y'all also said like the minefield scenes where people were and people getting killed really violently that kind of had an effect on us as well watching the movie but it showed like how real that stuff can be 